This is lesson 8.5, solving equations with variables on both sides. This is where it starts to get a little tricky, so bear with me and take some notes. And we're going to practice this for a few days. So if you don't get it right away, that's fine. It takes a little practice, but you will get it in the end. It just takes some time. So keep working hard and keep uh, taking some good notes so we can look back at them in a little bit. Uh, first of all, let's just take a, a second to refresh our memory on the two-step equations that we've talked about in the past. So if you look at this one, this is 4x plus 6 equals 30. In your head, I want you to think right now what you do first. You minus 6, so I hope that's what you said, minus 6. So I have 4x equals 24. We're going to divide by 4, divide by 4, x is going to be 6. I can check by putting it back in here and say 4 times 6 is 24 plus 6 is 30. Okay, over here is a little different one. Um, I maybe have to take a few steps before I solve. And the step before I solve is I'm going to combine what I can combine. I'm going to simplify. I'm going to combine what I can do. So this says 5c equals 25. And I'm just going to divide by 5. I want to figure out what C is. So C is 5. We're going to build off these types of problems today. Uh, so it's important that we know how to do these to do the next few. So first of all, I have a few steps for solving equations with variables on both sides. This means that I, I need to explain that variables with both sides would look something like this. There's variables on both sides of the equation. That's the type of equations we're going to see today. So the first step is you're going to find the variables and you're going to work with the variables. So one and two go along together. So first thing you're going to do, is you're going to find the variables and you're going to do work with them first. Okay. Second thing, you're going to work with your constants. And remember, the constants are other things that don't have a letter with it. Uh, the last thing you're going to do is you're going to just solve for your variable then. So if you need to write the um, steps down, Make sure you write your steps down. I would say variables first, constants second, and then solve. All right, so before I solve this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a picture of what this looks like. This is 3x equals x plus 8. So what this looks like is x plus x plus x. Okay, so this is 3x right here equals x plus 8. Now I want you to think back to seventh grade we talked about how everything is a balance and what you do on one side you have to do the other side and if you think about your x's remember when we solve for x x is going to be the same number so i want to remember that when we start solving x is going to be the same number so it's the same number plus the same number plus the same number equals that same number plus eight and that means that this side is equal to whatever this side is equal to so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look here, and remember my goal is to get x by itself. And so I'm going to take out my duplicates, meaning I'm going to take things out from both sides that cancel each other out. So if I take an x from this side, I'm going to take an x from this side. Okay, I canceled things out that I know are, that will cancel each other out. So now on this side, I have two x's left equals 8. And then I can solve as just like what we've been doing in the past. x, 2x divided by 2, divided by 2. x is 4. Now, this is what it means. Okay, so let's say my x's were back here. That means 4 plus 4 plus 4 equals 4 plus 8. Which is true because this side is 12, and this side would also be 12. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next one. This says 5x plus 4 equals 7x. I'm going to actually draw this picture out again for you. So it's x plus x plus x plus x plus x. So this all together would be 5x plus 4 equals 7x. 6, 7, I want to try to get it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. So x is the same number. And so on both sides, I'm going to take out my duplicates, meaning the ones that cancel each other out. So I'm going to take an x here. I'm going to take one here. I'm going to take one here. And 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 I'm going to erase these last two. And I'm going to take two from this side. Okay. So let's look to see what we have left here. We have 4 equals, and then I have 2x's. So I'm going to write it like this, 2x. And I'm going to solve like normal, divide by 2, divide by 2. x is 2. 
and I put it back in, 5 times 2 plus 4 is the same as 7 times 2, which is right because both sides are equal to 14. Now, do you have to draw a picture of this every time? No, but I just want to show you what I mean when I talk about getting out the duplicates and getting out the ones that cancel out. Okay, here's another one I'm going to talk about, and it looks like this. 3x minus 2 equals x. Now, here's the thing. You can't leave one side unattended, meaning you can't leave it so there's nothing on one side. So if I would take this out, what happens to my balance? My balance goes crazy because I have nothing on the other side. So I'm going to read, go back to this. And you can do it this way also. So do you see you have positive three x's here? Where we're going to subtract three x's. Okay, we're going to subtract three x's. But if I do that on this side, I have to do it to the other side. So 1 minus 3x's would be a negative 2x equals my negative 2 divided by negative 2 divided by negative 2. x is going to be 1. So I want you to remember that you can't, if I just take this from this side, I'm going to have nothing over here and I can't do that. I have to have x, like I have to have two sides of my equation. It has to be balanced. And we'll, you'll get to, you'll understand more and more as we get going here in practice. Okay, so here's an example of another one, and I'm just going to start, instead of drawing a picture, I'm just going to start solving it with you. So if you can remember, the first thing we did is we got out our duplicate. So I have 3V here, and I have 8V here. So most likely, I'm going to subtract 3V v from this side, as soon as it comes, yeah. having technical difficulties, it looks like. You can't subtract. I can't even write on the board. Nothing's even showing up. All right, let's try now. I don't know what's going on. Something's not working. Just gonna unplug some things here quick. Oh, there you go. All right, let's see what happens now. All right, there we go. Sorry, technical difficulty. Okay, so I talked about I have three V's on this side, I have eight on this side. So let's take out the duplicates and let's get it so the only variables are left on one side. So I'm going to minus 3v from here. That's like me erasing 3 from this side. And I'm going to minus 3 from this side. That's like erasing 3v's from that side. So now this is what the problem looks like. And it's exactly a two-step equation that you've solved in the past. So the first thing you do if you get rid of your duplicates, it turns into a two-step equation you know how to do. So I'm going to continue. I'm going to minus 7. I'm going to minus 7. I have to keep change, change over here. So I have negative 15 equals 5v divided by 5, divided by 5. My v equals negative 3. And I can put v in, negative 3 in, and it should equal on both sides of the equation. Okay, let's try another one. I have 9v's on one side and I have 5v's on the other side. I'm going to subtract 5v from this side. Because that's like me taking 5 from this side also and to figuring out how many Bs I have left over on this side. Okay, I'm going to bring everything down I did not use. And then it's my two-step equation that I know how to solve. 3B equals 24 divided by 3 divided by 3. B equals 8. Okay, so as soon as you do this step, it's everything you've done in the past. That's why it's so important for us to know how to do those two-step equations. Okay, I'm going to do one that has a fraction with it. Um, don't worry, you can do it. I know you can do it. So I have six-fifths y and I have four-fifths y on the other side. So just pretend uh, and I'm going to get rid of the four-fifths y here. Cancel out and I'm going to get rid of four-fifths y here. 
because it's me taking out the same thing. So what I'm going to have left over here, I'm going to have 2 fifths y plus 8 equals this whole thing is going to come down as a negative 10. I'm going to minus 8. I'm going to minus 8. This is going to keep change change. I'm going to 2 fifths y equals negative 18. Divide by 2 fifths. Now this is just what we've done in the past. Goes in once, goes in nine times, and I get negative 45. So don't let the fractions freak you out. Just find the one that's the smallest and subtract from both sides so you can figure out what you have left over on that one side. Okay, let's do one that has a, um, a decimal. I have a 2.4 plus a, I'm going to put a 1 there, equals 2.5a minus 4.5. Uh, so I have a 1a on this side, and I have a 2.5a on the right side. So I'm going to subtract 1a here, and I'm going to take 1a here, because it's going to tell me how many I have left over. So 1.5a minus 4.5 equals 2.4. So I'm going to plus 4.5, plus 4.5 equals 9. I get 6.9 equals 1.5a. I'm going to divide. I'm going to divide. So 6.9 divided by 1.5, and I get a equals 4.6. I'm going to stop with story problems right now, and we'll probably do a few of those in class together. I want to just make sure that we know how to solve first before we set up any story problems. So if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. Uh, we will continue to work on this and practice this together in class. We'll probably pra dedicate a whole day just to practice. So let me know if you have any questions, and thanks for watching.